Okay, here goes nothing. <laughs> Hello, beautiful people. My name is Amanda Zitto. If you are new here, I make motorcycle travel content, um, how to's and general encouragement for you to get out and do the thing. Speaking of which, you like my shirt? <laughs> Let me know if you guys can hear me. Um, <laughs> that's always the fun part about this is that I get to wait for like the delay for to hear if you guys can hear me or not. Um, hopefully that you can. Uh, this is going to be the Q&A like, wrap-up for the As the Magpie Flies. That's what it is. I'm having a little... Um, yes, the Flight of the Magpie. I'm sorry. Wrap-up of the Flight of the Magpie, which was my 8,000 mile loop of the United States. If you do not know what I'm talking about, I have a whole playlist here on my channel of the whole series. All of the nice wrapped-up, finished episodes. It was super awesome to get to edit all of those, which was lovely. Oh, audio is good. Thank you guys. I appreciate you. <laughs> I will not be having whiskey tonight. Um, I haven't been feeling super awesome the last two weeks. Um, I have actually been properly sick. Um, I'm just kind of recovering from the worst parts of it. Um, so instead of whiskey, I have hot chocolate in my, I don't know if it'll focus on it, but on my, um, Great Lake Supply mug. It says, watch for motorcycles on it. It's beautiful. If you do not know about Great Lake Supply, um, Megan Stark actually owns this company. She did the, all the designs and everything. They started selling coffee recently, which is super cool. If I was a coffee drinker, I would be on that. So Megan, when you start selling tea, let me know. <laughs> Hello, city of gentle people. <laughs> I love that, that's awesome. Fantastic. Yes, Stark Naked Cup. Mmm, yes. Fantastic. Hi, Scott. Pete's here. Moto Blonde is here. Whit Mesa is here. All of my lovely people are here. And I'm so glad that you are here. It makes me so happy to see, or at least not exactly your faces, your names in the chat box. That makes me super happy. <laughs> Scott, I'm going to run through some questions from Instagram first um, for some of the people who weren't going to be able to be here and then I will start grabbing questions from the chat. Okay, you guys. Sean, I see you making fun of me. Don't don't think that I don't see you. I see you. Okay. <laughs> Getting right off to the bat. Um, Cowbell15 on Instagram asked, um, do you have any plans for a dual sport bike? That's easy. No, unless you're going to buy me one. <laughs> Um, I have zero plans to get any kind of new bike um, in the foreseeable future. I got rid of uh, the Tiger specifically because I didn't want to be in that kind of debt anymore. I actually have a lot of credit card debt. I'm trying to whittle that down before I try to take on any more debt. That being said, you know, if anybody wants to give me a dual sport, I would not be opposed. Next up, um, her two wheels. If you had more time, what's the one thing that you would have added to the trip? Oh, that's so hard. I had like so many things on my list, you guys, including like meeting a ton of you, which I didn't get to do because I got out there and realized how fast paced my like schedule had to be and quickly realized that there was no way for me to give anybody any kind of advanced warning of where I was going to be because I myself did not know where I was going to be. Um, but I think um, if there were just one place that I would have added, it probably would have been Rocky Mountain National Park. In Colorado but I wasn't able to go there because of the weather um, I don't know how totally clear it was in the videos but but when I got to Colorado I was literally only there for like an afternoon and I had to leave the next morning like after I had breakfast with Lisa and Eric Hogan of Wolfman Luggage because um, Colorado got a major snowstorm the evening that like I was crossing into the Utah border. Uh, Denver and that whole area just got slammed with a major snowstorm. So it just was not possible for me to go to any of the national parks in Colorado. Um, I definitely, I definitely need to go back there. Um, yeah, but there was like, there were so many people that I really wanted to see and it just didn't work out. Like I had talked to Craig Ripley about like meeting up with him. Um, his channel is Living Off Slab. Um, I really wanted to go down to Charleston to pick on Chris Lonsberry and, uh, and Chris from uh, Scrambler Stories. Um, yeah, I, just, I missed out on a ton of people. I mean, I'm so glad that I got to meet the people that I did get to meet while I was on the road. Um, 
they were incredible, like Wit and Jess and Doodle um, and Pete and his family, just incredible. And I'm like so grateful that I got to stay with them because it definitely made the trip like a like a, a level above. It was so cool. Um, two wheels to survive. Um, best unexpected piece of road from the trip. West Virginia, <laughs> which sounds funny because like most of West Virginia was in the rain for me. And so I didn't, I didn't get to like experience the way that I wanted to experience it. But um, West Virginia was incredible. Like the part going into it when I got to camp wasn't raining and it was just gorgeous. And even in the rain, getting out of West Virginia and heading to Virginia to find like a hotel to like seek shelter in so I could dry out all of my stuff. Um, that it was incredible and I was just cursing myself the whole time and so disappointed that it was raining and that I couldn't like rip all of those curvy robes because I wanted to so bad. <laughs> uh, CJ12, uh, one favorite memory or place during the trip? Um... I'm, you're, you're all going to hate me, but uh, camping in the mountains with my brother in Bozeman. <laughs> Is it cheating if I say my favorite memory and place was in Montana? Because it feels a little bit like cheating. But for real, though, like, I think it's episode episode two. You, um, I think it is. Pretty sure it is. In episode two, um, my brother and I camped at, this, at the base of this gorgeous mountain, like... The scenery looked like something like you would have to hike to get to, but we just like rode up a gnarly road and camped like at the base of this gorgeous mountain. Um, obviously, it's like a super popular place for Bozemanites because like there was a ton of people there, and there was definitely there was teenagers that like were just like screaming all night at the lake, so it was like echoing off the mountain. But um, even though, like, my brother broke his windshield and, like, all of that junk happened, it's still probably, like, my favorite part of the whole trip because, like, I never got to go camping with my brother before, um, at least since we were really little. Maybe I'll amend that. I've never got to go motorcycle camping with my brother before, like, just the two of us. And so that was just, like, really special and amazing. I don't know. It's my favorite. It was awesome. Jess, her two wheels, thank you so much for the super chat. Can't wait to eat ramen and ice cream with you again. It was so cool. <laughs> that was super rad. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't wait either. Maybe next time you'll come to my neck of the woods and I can buy ice cream and ramen for you because I felt so spoiled. You bought all the food. <laughs> okay, the Moto Scout. Um, if you could change anything about the trip, what would it be actually I've got a couple of questions that are kind of similar to this but um uh anything about the trip um probably time but at the same time like that wasn't the only way that I really could have fixed the amount of time that I had to do the trip would have been to quit my job and that really just wasn't an option um it was nothing like when I quit my job the pilgrimage a that job sucked which is part of the reason I quit that job um, and I wasn't super worried about getting a job when I came back because, like, I was really willing to do anything. Um, and the job market when I got back from the pilgrimage is totally different to trying to find a job in Portland right now. It's, uh, very difficult. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, if I could change it, it would have been time, like, like, the amount of time that I had to do it. Uh, but since that's not really feasible. Um, I wish that I would have bought my new suit before I did the trip. Um, I bought a new riding suit when I got back. I don't think that I've told you guys yet. I got um, the Revit Neptune Gore-Tex suit, like the pants and the jacket. I have them in a pile here, but I'm not going to disrupt my pile over here. Oh, I'm out of focus again. Sorry. Um, and I've gotten to ride it a couple times now. And it's just so nice. I don't like the fact that there's no pockets. Well, no pockets. There's no usable pockets. Uh, but the fact that it's Gore-Tex and like just, it's very well insulated. Although I don't, I'm not sure that I would have 
properly change that either because the scorpion suit did so much better in the heat than I think the rabbit suit will probably do. But then again, I haven't gotten to experience the rabbit suit in the heat, so I don't know for certain. Um, I, I think that's kind of also unfair because the scorpion suit did like fantastic the whole rest of the trip and really I only got wet like like once, you know, like in West Virginia, the, the rainstorms in Wisconsin, I was fine. Um, and there was just kind of a snowstorm in Utah. I'm not sure if I would have really gotten properly wet in that, but yeah, for all intents and purposes, I think the scorpion suit did pretty darn well, but um, the luxury of the rabbit suit, you know, would have been interesting to experience on a long trip. I don't know. Blue Ghost, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate that. Zerny, thank you for the super chat. Next box of tea. Thank you. I'm getting low. <laughs> oh my god, Olivia is here! Kill Switch Queen is here! Hi! Oh, oh, thank you for being here. I'm so glad to see you. Yay! <laughs> getting distracted. <laughs> The Moto Scout also asked, what would be your ideal bike to do the trip over again on? My bike. <laughs> Thought it did fine. I don't really have any gripes about that. Um, where would you want to go back um, from Lynn Biggs? West Virginia and Colorado. Those are my two I, I need. I need to go back. There's a bunch of like new places that I need to go, but places to go back to... I need to go back to West Virginia and Colorado. <laughs> Mr. Vasquez, was there a better time of year you could have chosen to do this? I'm not... I feel like August was fine. I had no gripes. It was hot. It was really hot in a lot of places, but I kind of prefer it to be hot than really cold. Um, like, my experience of, like, doing the pilgrimage, like, in May, June to, like, July, like you in june you still get a lot of really cold nights when you're at higher elevation um yeah i, I think that i think i did a perfect job like picking the amount of like of time like that my work would have let me off and like didn't inconvenience them but also like i still got peak season of like being able to hit like pretty great weather the whole time i was out there like it was really hot but what are you gonna do you know i'd rather be hot than like wet all the time and and the grand scheme of things, like, I only hit, like, three rainstorms. That's not too bad. Anonymous Biker, thank you so much for the super chat. I need to meet up with you next trip. Yes. Yes. Hopefully the next trip, like, I will have enough time to, like, actually properly plan meetups and that kind of stuff so I can meet more of you. Um, yeah. I feel so bad. Like, so many people, like, offered me places to stay and stuff and I wasn't able to even take it up because I was getting into places at, like, 11 p.m. midnight and I felt terrible, like, texting somebody, like, an hour before I was going to get there and be like, hey, can I stay with you? <laughs> the Moto Scout, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. More frozen waffles for the Oregon Luminary. <laughs> the rest of you will get the Oregon Luminary thing next week. Um, patrons already have access to the video that I'm publishing next week because I was ahead of the game this week. Um, so if you want to get next week's video ahead of time, you can become a patron for as little as $1 a month, get early access to videos. Self-plug. <laughs> uh, Shermaj, when you left Vernal, did you ride through the Flaming Gorge National Recreation Area? No. I did not go north. I don't know how many people pay attention and see. I post the maps, like, like, kind of the general route that I took. I did not go north, so no. The answer is no. <laughs> oh, Olivia! Thank you for the super chat. Merry Christmas. You're amazing. Thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> Jess, women YouTuber motorcycle meetup in 2021. Yes. 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 All of the yes. All of this. Yes. C.E. Roos, thank you so much for the super chat. Are any thoughts on an international trip at some point, and if so, where? Um, I, mm, this is not foreshadowing. Do not take this as foreshadowing, but I have been having a lot of dreams about Baja. The last dream that I had, I won a trip to Baja, went down there with the group, got bored of the group, and went off on my own, which I 
think it's mostly my brain telling me that I should probably do Baja by myself next time instead of going in a group. <laughs> um, I don't have any immediate plans for any international travel. Obviously. Not super possible right now. Um, but uh, I would love to go to Canada. Um, just because, like, I'm from Montana. The border is right there. Yeah. <laughs> Pete, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for letting me stay with you guys. It's like the best. Okay. Where am I? Uh, CJ12 and... Uh, okay. There, here's a couple that are kind of like in the same vein, so I'm going to answer them all together. CJ12 and right on to and Daniel White asked, like, what's the biggest lesson you learned during the trip slash, like, what would you do differently knowing what you do now. Um, I am going to post, like, a lessons learned from 24 days on the road kind of thing, the way that I did when I got back from the pilgrimage. And I have a big old list of, like, everything I wrote down immediately when I got back. And, of course, that list is in my pocket of my best at work. <laughs> so I don't have it right here right now. Um, there aren't, like, a ton of huge things. Most of the stuff that I would have changed, like, slash things that I've learned were, like, all really little things. And also just, like, re-learning the lesson. I feel like I'm always relearning the lesson that, like, you need to find a place to sleep, bef- like, you know, a good two hours before it gets dark, not, like, as it's getting dark, Amanda. But I'm always relearning that lesson because, like, I'm always pushing. Like, I'm like, well, we could, we could just keep going. We could just keep going and set up in the dark. It's fine. But it's never fine. I hate it so much. I need to do better at that. Um, uh, um, other little things, like I took an extra old phone. Um, I have an older phone, like the one that I had before I replaced it. And I was like, oh, well, I'll just take that as an extra phone. Except for the reason, like the reason I replaced that phone is because the battery like was shite and like could not um, run without being plugged in all the time. So it was pretty much useless and stayed in the bottom of my bag, like, the whole trip. It was a complete waste of space. Um, and I never wanted to, like, actually take the time to ship it back home. Because it was fun. Like, you know. Uh, I still stick with, like, I really wish that I had brought a telephoto lens. Um, I do have a nice new zoom lens for my camera now. Um, it's like a 28 to 200, so like I have like more of that telephoto range that I really wish that I had had on the trip. Um, that's just like nerdy stuff, I think. But but yeah, I will have a I will have a proper sit down talk to you about all the lessons that I learned and things that I wish that I had done differently. I will have that soon. <laughs> Klaus Nielsen, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Moto Blonde, <gasps> thank you for the super chat. Always have a place in New York if you're through here. Yes! 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 I feel like I need to do, like, another tour of the U.S. just so I can, like, hit up, like, all of the new moto vloggers that I have found, like, since coming, just from coming back on the trip. There are so many new, amazing... Woo! I just spilled... <laughs> I got too excited. I just spilled hot chocolate everywhere. Oops! Well, I'll have to wipe that up later. <laughs> Tim C, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Love what you do. Thank you. Jim Hover, thank you so much for the super chat. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, my my leg is covered in hot chocolate now. That's good job, Amanda. (laughs) Okay, moving on. Samurai study martial arts. Were you ever scared on the trip at all? Mm. my instinct is to say no. I don't think I was ever properly scared. Like, I was nervous about getting back to Portland on time so I wouldn't lose my job. (laughs) But, and, like, uh, I was cold. But I don't think I was ever really properly scared. Um... Yeah. Like, there, there were, there were moments, like, on the pilgrimage that I was properly scared. Like, I, when I was dropping my bike a ton, like, on, um outside of Lewistown, Montana, like, that was probably scary. Like, I had to, like, walk for an hour to find somebody. I didn't know if I was going to be able to find somebody, but I have a satellite messenger now, so that's not really a worry for me anymore. 
Um, and also because I didn't really get that far off the beaten path on this trip, I was really just slabbing it most of the time. We did a lot. Of, we did a, do a lot of dirt roads in Montana just for fun. But like once we got out of Montana, I didn't hit up a lot of dirt. Um, just because I was trying to make miles. Yeah, no, I feel like this trip, like, of all of my trips, was, has been, like, the most straightforward. <laughs> like, very few things went wrong. Like, I, I wouldn't even say that they went wrong. Like, uh, it was just maintenance stuff on the bike. Like, I replaced tire, replaced the chain, that kind of stuff that wasn't really a, a problem. And, like, even getting rained out on my campsite, like, none of my stuff really got, like, properly wet because my tent did its job. Everything was dry. It's not like, I, like a bunch of my stuff got soaked. I was just, like, drying out, like, the tent and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it did its job. It was a good tent. Um, uh, yeah. Apart from, like, my gear, like, failing, but whatever. <laughs> Christy, Christy Chamberlain asks, between all your bags, how many liters of space did you have for the trip, and how much of that space was taken up by the camera equipment? I actually did research for this one and wrote all of this stuff down. <laughs> so, um, I have the Black Hawk tank bag which I actually have here. It was propping up my tablet so that, with all my questions on it. See? It's the brand new, it's like the 2020. All of my Wolfman bags on the bike, um, besides the cup holder thing, um, were the brand new 2020 Wolfman um, waterproof line. So the new tank bag is waterproof, which was freaking amazing. <laughs> like I didn't have to have everything uh, that was camera equipment and dry bags in my tank bag. So that part was incredible. Anyway, I'm getting on a tangent. Um, that is 10 liters that had most of my camera equipment in it. The only thing that was um, n not in there was my tripod and my drone. Um, everything else was in the tank bag. So tank bag was 10 liters. The Rocky Mountain saddle bags were 30 liters each, which were, was a major step up from my old saddle bags. So that makes that 60 liters. The Expedition Dry duffel on the back with all of my camping stuff in it, like my tent, um, my... <clears throat> my sleeping pad, my chair, um, like all of that stuff that I would just like need to set up camp is 58 liters. And the two small rolly bags on my crash bars are six liters each, so that's 12. Um, and I did have two tractor manual tubes like mounted on the inside of my like saddlebag racks. Uh, we're gonna be super generous and like say that those are like maybe like two liters. Um, but not quite, maybe like a, li a liter each. Um, but so I did, I did the math for myself so I wouldn't have to do it on camera. <laughs> um, in total, I had like about 142, 143 liters for all of my luggage. Um, I did also have a pull bag, which is where my, my uh, tripod lived for the trip. So it was easy to pull in and out and it was um, pretty well camouflaged. Like looking at it, you wouldn't know my tripod was in there, which is good because it's kind of an expensive tripod. Um, and I think, uh, I would say, like, probably, like, maybe 14 of that was camera equipment. Like, the whole 10 of my tank bag was camera equipment and the, the drone and the tripod. That's, that, the, yeah. So, like, 14 liters was all my camera equipment. Probably, like, less than some, more than others. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Everything packed down pretty darn well. Um, but then again, like, I left a ton of stuff home that I really wanted to bring <laughs> So, <laughs> yay. Okay, that's all the Instagram questions. I'll move on to the the YouTube post here in a second. But I did see that I missed a couple of super chats while I was answering that question. Let me go back up here. Garth Howe, thank you so much for the super chat. Christmas money, you are wonderful. Thank you. Pete West, thank you so much for the super chat. Lisa said I didn't send enough, so Merry Christmas. <laughs> you guys are so silly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. Um. <laughs> oh, oh my god, Garrett Raven is here. Thank oh, I'm so glad. Th Thank you for being here. It's so wonderful to see you. Or see you. You know what I mean. <laughs> I love the conversation happening in the live chat right now. This is this is amazing. Yay! Oh, Muda Carey is here! Yay! Hi! Hello, wonderful people! Oh, oh, this is the best. I love live streaming with you guys because like all of my favorite people show up. Mm. Ugh, it's so good. 
Amanda always be camping, even in hotel rooms. <laughs> I've, I've been getting a lot of, like, angry people at me about my campfire dinners and holiday inns. Uh, you know, I've never set off a fire alarm, and no hotel has ever charged me extra or anything like that, or, like, come and knock my door down, so... Um, I think somebody did ask me if I had ever set off a fire alarm, and the answer is no. If you are worried about it, though, that's why, like, you could do it in the bathroom and turn the fan on. It does the same exact thing as an exhaust fan on a stove would do. Um, David Smith, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. Thank you. My hot chocolate is getting low. I did. I Yes, there it is. Oh, God! <laughs> I totally did not just fall over. It's fine. Everything is fine. We're, we're, we are refreshing the hot chocolate now. Hard <laughs> two wheels. See, I told you camping on the East Coast is hard. It's true. Um, I, in my defense, I like also was trying to find camping like not too far off of like interstates and major highways. Um, I didn't get like a whole like out in the backwoods the way I normally would travel because I was trying to make miles. So I, I'm like reserving my judgment for when I try to do it again and like do it like the Amanda way and not the let's get it done way. <laughs> okay, comments from the YouTube post. Moving on here. Motor Girls represent. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Chris Fant asked me a ton of questions, so we're going to go through this. Uh, when you are traveling, is there anything you miss about not traveling? That one's easy. M my, my bed. I miss my significant other too. I miss hugs. I miss hugs a lot when I'm on the road, which is why I'm a hugger. I don't know. <laughs> um, but mostly my bed. I think about sleeping in my own bed a lot when I'm traveling. Uh, do you have a one, three, and or five year goal? <laughs> this is so cringy thinking about like uh, five year goals and that kind of stuff because like every time I set these like and I get you know that far down the road like I am nowhere near where I thought that I would be or like or I'm farther than I thought that I would be it's all like very convoluted so um, making goals that are more than like a couple months out just seems like super not pointless but yeah <laughs> anyway for the sake of the question um, one year, uh, just to be doing all right and surviving, um, cause like 2020, like, whoa, <sighs> I'm just happy to still be here. I'm happy to still have, um, the bikes that I do have. I am very happy to still have a home, still would be with my wonderful significant other. Um, I got a truck camper. Somebody gave me a truck camper. Um, my lovely other mom, I have a bunch of moms, um, in Montana. That's a different story. But one of my moms gave me her pop-up truck camper, so I have a truck camper now, which is super awesome. Um, as, like, far as things go, uh, I came out of, oh, I'm coming out of 2020, like, probably better than a lot of people. Um, maybe not as good as others, but uh, I have nothing to complain about, that's for sure, besides the stress factor. <laughs> uh, three years, um, maybe not to have to be working at retail. That would be that would be nice. Uh, working at REI has been awesome, but also it's still it's still retail. Like it's still very stressful to be in customer service, um, especially in 2020. Whew. Oh boy! Um, if you guys are gonna be shopping like at physical retail locations for the Christmas holidays and like returning things after Christmas, please, please do not yell at the cashier. Okay, like all of the stuff that are, is being handed down to us from corporate, like, we have no say in. <laughs> like, yelling at us isn't going to do any good. Like, you're just yelling at somebody who's just trying to get through the day just like you. Um, so please just be kind. Be patient. Like, nobody has had an awesome year. Okay. <laughs> uh, five years uh, to be able to support myself off of my own work like uh, commissions and Etsy and YouTube, I would love to just be able to support myself and not have to have a day job. Like that would be incredible. Um, I don't know if that's wholly possible for me, um, but it's a goal, you know, reach, aim high, right? <laughs> um, last frick from Chris, if you had to stay forever in just one area you visited on the trip, where would it be? 
<laughs> when I read this one, I was like, oh, yes, easiest question ever. Montana, because I did stay with my family in Montana for like a week, not a whole week, but almost a week on the trip. So that one was super easy. <laughs> Yes, Olivia, retail is super draining. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> Amanda signs autographs all day at work. Not quite, um, but there have been people who have come into my REI and recognized me. And some people talk to me and some people like push somebody else ahead of them to come to me and then like ask my coworkers if I do YouTube, which I think is just like so cute. Um, yeah, no, it's lovely. If you do come into my work and you recognize me, like, absolutely say hi. I love it. Um, my coworkers make fun of me now because this happens. Um, but it's so cool. It's super awesome. <laughs> it takes a special kind of soul to survive retail during Christmas. It's, yes. Yeah. The hundred <laughs> percent. Okay. B. Hoffner, what kind of tires did you use on the trip? I had TKC 70s on when I left that already had quite a few miles on them. Um, so when I got to Virginia, I switched the rear tire and they didn't have uh, the Continentals at all. So I, I just love the TKC 70s. They have never failed me. I love the way that they perform on and off road. Like they're not like the most aggressive tire. You're not going to do like mud and snow and that kind of stuff in them. But like, they get the job done for me, and that's what I love about them, and I love that the, their long life, even though they are kind of a more expensive tire. I have tried Shinkos that are a much more inexpensive tire on the Tiger because I needed a more aggressive tire for that, um, but I just eat them up so fast. It's, like, crazy. So, mileage-wise, like, it's almost the same cost as the Continentals for me. Um, anyway, when I got to Virginia, um, Moto Richmond... Um, in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, there were amazing, oh my god, the customer service at that place was just incredible. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Joe Sokol recommended them. Thank you. They were so cool. I did not get to meet the owner. I had hoped, like, I was going to, but I didn't, whatever. The customer service, though, just mm, impeccable. Um, he put a Michelin Anarchy Adventure on my rear tire. Um, and I don't have any real complaints about the performance of that rear tire, just that it was so loud, <laughs> like on the freeway. Uh, it was a noticeable difference. That's uh, that's what I will say. Oh my God, thank you, Two Wheels. Um, if, for some reason, it's cutting off the end of your name on my side. But thank you so much for the super chat. You were amazing. I just realized that's what your sticker said. But <clears throat> thank you. You were also awesome. <laughs> Donna, I have no idea how much the horsepower on the Honda is. That is that is a good question for Google. I don't I don't really keep up with the tech specs on that kind of stuff. Um, because I don't care. <laughs> Razor, thank you so much. Alright, moving on to the next question over here from the YouTube comments from the post yesterday. Um Carl S., what would you use or do differently with some of the gear you had? I saw a frog dog, frog dog's rain jacket blew apart. What would you suggest as an inclement weather gear setup along the same lines? Would you suggest wearing a waterproof barrier over or under your main riding suit? Um, there was a ton of people who were like, oh, the frog dogs must be shit. Must, you must not have liked it. I got the frog togs specifically just because it like was an easy option. It was cheap. It wasn't meant to be a long-term purchase. I knew that they were gonna blow apart. Like frog togs are not meant for riding on the bike. Like <laughs> any kind of like highway winds, it's just dead. Like you know. Um, I knew that they weren't gonna last very long. It was just because like I knew I, would, I needed to get through the rainstorm and that was it. Um, I like like I said earlier like. Really, the scorpion suit did amazing, like, overall. I didn't hit a whole lot of rain. If I knew that I was going to be hitting, like, a lot of rainstorms all at once, like, um, I probably would have gone to, like, an actual motorcycle shop and seen if I could pick up, like, a Nelson Rig suit. Um, when I did the pilgrimage, I did have a Nelson Rig suit. Like, I had the, or at least I had the top. Um, the pants that they sent me, like, didn't fit me. <laughs> 
so I didn't have any rain gear for the bottom, but I had the jacket, and the jacket did amazing. Like, mm, would not have, like, asked for anything better. It was incredibly durable. It did the job properly. I never got wet, or at least my core never got wet. My pants did because I didn't have the covers for the pants. And uh, the suit that I wore on the pilgrimage was didn't ha even have a waterproof layer. They just, yeah. Um, as far as, like, whether or not you should have, like, rain gear uh, over the top or under it, um, like I said, the scorpion suit did fine in Wisconsin. Like, I think part of my issue really in West Virginia um, had to do with the fact that, like, part, like, some of the water was coming in through my collar, which is not the fault of the suit. Is just probably like the way that I was wearing it or like maybe like the rain jacket I had underneath of it that I had been wearing at camp that I just didn't take off. Like maybe the hood was bringing it into the jacket, you know. Um, that doesn't excuse the fact that like my legs were wet because like the one of the zippers um, along the pant is like super exposed and um, water just kind of like withers its way through the zipper and gets you wet. That's just you know, that what happens. But um I've also worn the scorpion suit in other, like, rainstorms and been totally fine. So, um, the downside to having a rain layer under, um, the textile instead of over the textile is that the textile does, like, kind of start to soak up moisture. Especially if you, if you're in a heavy rainstorm, um, um, the textile just soaks up water and it's going to make you colder because that water is soaked into the textile. Even if you aren't wet, the rain, like, the wind is hitting that rain and keeping you cold. Like, it's going to make it much more difficult for you to stay warm, um, which poses a whole other set of problems. Um, so if you're going to be, like, in an area like like Portland, where it rains a lot, um, probably over the suit, rain suit, is going to be a better option for you. But that's kind of why I have the AeroStitch suit. The AeroStitch suit is incredible for, like, like uh, <laughs> winter weather in the PMW, because I can layer a ton underneath of it. I put... The Aerostitch suit over top of it. It's a one-piece suit. It is heckin' waterproof. I have never gotten wet in that suit. The reason I didn't take the Aerostitch suit on the trip is because it's incredibly heavy. Like, super heavy. And um, I have tried to do longer trips on it before, just like going to Montana and back like I normally do. And by the end of it, I kind of started to get bruises on my shoulders from the armor um, because of the weight of the suit pulling down. Um, still an incredible suit, and I use it, like, when I do, like, like the winter riding just in the Portland area, um, because I know it's going to keep me dry. I, for a fact, I know it. <laughs> um, but it's not super ideal for long distance, in my personal opinion, because, like, it's not super breathable. There aren't a whole lot of vents. Um, you, if it's super hot, you just kind of start to bake in it, because it's such, like, a thick, durable material, like... The heat doesn't have a whole lot of room to escape. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> it's totally a personal preference. Like, the, the Revit Neptune suit, like, the waterproof layer is underneath of the textile layer. But it's Gore-Tex, so I'm really interested to see how that specifically behaves. Versus, like, the Scorpion suit was not Gore-Tex. Like, the rain layer and the Scorpion suit is, like, their own proprietary kind of knockoff version of a waterproof um, layer. But, um, Yeah. That was a super long-winded answer. I am sorry. <laughs> and see, Olivia, how do the TKC-70s feel in corners? I find 8020 or 9010 tires aren't the most confidence-inspiring twisties. So the TKC-70s are a 70-30 tire. They don't have huge knobs. Um, I personally have no issue, but I've also been riding the TKC-70s like since 2016. Yeah, 2016 is when I... I first put the TKC-70s on Lazarus for the pilgrimage specifically, and uh, I fell in love with them. And so when I got the Honda and I wore, uh, wore out the stock tires on it, I put the TKC-70s on it, and that was it. The the Shinkos, the 805s that I put on the Tiger, those are an 80-20 tire, and those can get kind of like, they take a minute to get used to. We'll say that, because they have a much thicker knob on them. Um, but those were the tires that I had on it when we went to Baja and Carl and Jason and I were just like destroying corners, uh, on any curvy road in Mexico. So I think it's just a matter of getting used to it, really. Uh, 
I agree with you, Amanda. I have some Gore-Tex Revit gear, but the fact of the the fact of the outer textile layer getting soaked, it's a big problem at times. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Like little sprinkles and that kind of stuff, like small, like summer rainstorms aren't gonna be a big deal, but like when you get into the fall or like spring, like when you get into a downpour, like that, yeah. <laughs> Wind chill is a factor. <laughs> okay. I'm Balone, I'm Baloney? Is that what your username is? Anyway. What's an item you wish you had on this adventure, but is too impractical to carry on a motorcycle? Uh, I think that I said already, I w really wish that I had brought the telephoto lens. Like I have a um, manual uh, telephoto lens from like my old film cameras and I have an adapter on it so I can use it with the Sony's. Um, I really wish that I had brought it even though it wouldn't have been autofocus, so I couldn't have used it for like anything with me in the shot, but um, yeah, it was just something else that got purged because it just took up way too much extra space. I couldn't really justify it. So I think the lenses I ended up taking on the trip were like a prime 50, um, full frame lens. And then like the 18 to 50 kit lens for the Sony 5100, um, that somebody bought me to replace the broken one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and like the, it did fine. Um, but like I... Yeah, I miss I missed the telephoto. I missed the ability zoom to zoom, which is the reason I bought the super nice, like twenty eight to two hundred when I got back. I purchased a lot of things when I got back. The 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 <laughs> oh, that happens, you know. You go on a trip, you figure out all the things that you missed, and like then you buy all those things, and you're like, man, I wish I should have just like bit the bullet and bought all these things before I left. But who cares? I have them for the next one. That is what matters. <laughs> okay, one more from the YouTube comments and then I'll start picking them from the from the chat. Uh, Sean Ennis asked, where are you planning to go next? Oh my god, so many people have asked me where I'm going next. I don't know, you guys. I feel like I just got back. I know it's been a couple months now, but I still feel like I just got back. Um, yeah. <laughs> Plus, like, trying to plan anything right now feels dumb. <laughs> um, I know that I'm going to Montana in February so that I can go home because I'm obviously working retail. I can't go home right now. But um, they black out dates all around Christmas so you can't ask for time off. Uh, so I'll be going back to Montana in February. That'll probably be in my truck and my truck camper. Um, so patrons will probably get that vlog. Um, uh, but, but yeah, next motorcycle trip probably won't be until April. Um, I have thrown around, um, trying to go winter camping on the bike because like, uh, you know, like March, like end of February, that kind of stuff, it starts to get a little bit more manageable here in the Portland, Oregon area. So I've thought about like doing like kind of a, a supper fest, like camping trip, um, but yeah, I don't have like any solid plans besides Rocky Mountain Roll. Rocky Mountain Roll tickets are on sale now, by the way, uh, for 2021. Um, August, I believe next year is August 6th, 7, 8, 9? 7, 6, 7, 8. 6, 7, 8. 6 to the 8th. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm not even drinking, you guys. This is, wow. Good job, Amanda. Uh, anyway. Rocky Mountain Roll tickets are on sale right, right now. So if you go to asthemegpieflies.com, there's a little Rocky Mountain Roll tab at the top. You click it. You can purchase tickets now, get the early bird price before it starts to go up again. Um, so I think right now tickets are like $45. So if you want to meet me, you want to come hang out in Montana on my ranch. I just spilled hot chocolate again. I need to stop holding this. <laughs> um... Rocky Mountain Roll is the place to do it. Uh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> and I've already been talking for forty-five minutes. Wow. Okay. Let's 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 get into the to the chat, shall we? Uh, Mavder is on the list. Yeah, Mavder is awesome. 
John and I currently use a terrain jacket and pants from RST earlier this year, and they're waterproof. Awesome! That's fantastic! Finding gear that, like, works for you and fits is, like, a struggle, so when you do find it, you kind of, like, hang on to it for a while. Dream those dreams, Amanda. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> I will try. I'm also, like, super hesitant, like, if I do dream, like, bigger things, like, of sharing it, and just in case I can't do it, because, yeah. Because then I disappoint a ton of people, like, saying that I was going to do meetups and not being able to do meetups. Like, a ton of people were really angry at me. Wow, those comments. Whew. Um, Craig Smith, how many miles did you go between fuel stops? Uh, 170-ish? Yeah, 100, I think 170. Um, somebody also did ask me, like, what the fuel mileage on the bike was. Um, actually, I actually think it was you, Craig. Um, asked me how, how, what my mileage on the bike was. Um, and I think I, I stayed at about 50 miles per hour, 50 miles per hour, 50 miles per gallon on the majority of the trip. Um, I did keep track of like all of my stops so that I could keep track of like how much money I spent. Um, so that I can do a video about that. Um, definitely spent a whole lot less money than I had thought that I was going to. But that was mostly because like a lot of the stuff that I wanted to stop and see and like sites and like little short tours and that kind of stuff were all closed. So a ton of money that I had planned to spend like on attractions and like doing touristy things I didn't end up spending. Which is probably a good thing because like it made for more room in the budget for all the hotels that I ended up staying at which was also not part of the plan. But it all worked out in the end and I still came in under budget. Cool cool cool. Hershey Willis, I want to try winter camping. Yes! Yes! We, we shall. We'll do the thing. <laughs> Maybe we'll collab from afar. You can do a winter camp. I'll do a winter camp. It'll be fun. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many blankets we had in the tent. It wasn't enough. Well, I have I have some tricks for you that, that may have helped. Um, I... I'll, mm. Yes, I have a video planned about that, <laughs> about like trying to stay warm while camping in the cold, because um, I have done quite a bit of that. And also, like working at REI, I've got to like learn from my coworkers like how they go about, because like a lot of them like to go snow camping. Um, so I've got a whole bunch of uh, tips from them that I want to put into a video. I have the script written and everything. I just have to sit down and film it. Um, Wit, are there decent rentals near there for August? Um, I believe there is one rental. Uh, company in Missoula. I'm pretty sure it's Eagle Rider um, out of like Grizzly Harley Harley Grizzly Harley Davidson in Missoula. Um, don't quote me, but I know there is a rental company in Missoula, so that's about an hour north of the event. Um, so yes, there is there's options. <laughs> Please come. <laughs> I would love to see you there. Come to Thailand. Cool. Are you paying for the flight? Cause wow. <laughs> That's a lot of money. <laughs> Kirhead giggling at you. Just love that you are yourself and don't sweat the small stuff. You, you know. You can, I can only pretend, like, put on a show so much. And in the end, it just is, like, wasted energy because nobody cares. <laughs> uh, Derek, have you ever been up to Vancouver, Washington and met Sean Smoke? He is one of my favorite YouTubers. Uh, I didn't know that there was a YouTuber in Vancouver, Washington. Um, I used to actually work in Vancouver, Washington, specifically, it's just across the river. That's where the tattoo shop is that I used to work at. Um, but no, I have not met Sean. I'm not sure, does Sean even know who I am? Is that, no, that's a better question. Whatever you are drinking, you need to come back. It's just hot chocolate, you guys, okay? It's just, can you see? It's just, it's hot chocolate. That's all that it is. Um, I just get really excited on streams because I, yeah, I haven't had a whole lot of social interaction besides my significant other because I've been sick for two weeks. Um, so like part of like my all over the place is probably also because uh, I am sleep deprived and uh, I'm still recovering. <laughs> for being sick. Who knew being sick is just as good as being drunk, you know? <laughs> just a lot of pain. 
You need some whiskey with your hot chocolate. I, uh, David, I don't think that's gonna help a whole lot with the, the healing part. Like, you know, the getting, the getting better part. Um, let's see. Oh, I lost where I was. 170. I don't know what that, I don't know what that. <laughs> I don't have to share everything I dream, but as long as you have some good ones. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate that. Amanda, if you're in the area around May 16th, 2021, you should join us on the Mount St. Helens Memorial Ride out of Castle Rock. Cool. Thank you. I will think about it. I'll probably forget. So if you have a Facebook event, invite me. I don't know. Um, I, I have a very short term memory, uh, by the way. So... If I'm not the one organizing the event, chances are I will forget that it's happening. <laughs> Do your whole budgeting video in Japanese yen. Jap <laughs> Zachary, I feel like uh, the majority of my audience uh, would not be stoked about that. Um, I think like uh, something like 80% of my audience is in the US and then like the other 20 is like in the UK and Australia. And then there's like little 1% of, so and like a ton of other places, but yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Portland in winter is not the same as Ohio in winter. It's true. It is not the same. Um, Wild Rider, do you have a plan in the future to do a North South run? say to Florida Keys. Um, no, not really. I... Oh my god, my brother is here! <laughs> Hi, Gary! Everybody say hello to Gary! He is my brother. You know that, that funny looking guy that was in the first couple videos? That's Gary. <laughs> it's Irish cream. It is not Irish cream, brother. I've been very good. Especially since, like, like my, like, Majority of my sick has been in my tummy, so I've been very careful about anything that's been going into my body. Because it would be nice not to be in pain anymore. That would be cool. Bye, Wit! It was so lovely. Thank you for being here. Give the kiddos a hug for me. Bye, Jess! Okay, I guess everybody's leaving now. <laughs> I'm sorry if I missed your guys' questions. Was there a loadout video of what you took on the last adventure? Um, there was not a loadout video. I did not do like one of those big, like, this is everything that I'm taking. Um, I did do like a couple of like prep videos, um, kind of going over like the stuff that I was updating, like the new tent, the new saddlebags, that kind of stuff, the new parts that I put on the bike. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't done any like big like this is everything that I'm taking kind of a video because I feel like those get out of date so quickly. Um, I did do one for the pilgrimage and then I took it down later because I was like, oh my god, I'm so dumb. Um, because like I packed all my clothes in like Ziploc bags and I packed way too many clothes and I was getting sick of getting all the like comments about like, wow, that's a lot of clothes. You're dumb. Um, so yeah, I that's part of the reason I haven't done like a big like this is everything I take on my trip because a I think that they um expire fairly quickly as soon as I get back my kit change ki my kit changes because I learn new things like I bought a new lens like all that kind of stuff um I am gonna do a new like how I make videos uh video that sounds funny um a lot of people have been asking for it and my kit has updated a lot since like the last one I did like two years ago um yeah uh lightning found thank you so much for the super chat i really appreciate it thank you thank you very much um it's true carrie irish cream would be very tasty and i look forward to a time when i'm well enough to do that uh drink that again did you just call me funny looking yes i did what you gonna do about it <laughs> Oh, look, brother, there's people from Argentina saying hello to you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> You're a fuel with your... I don't know what that means. Oh, bye, Moto Scout. Thank you for being here. I guess we're, we're, we're coming up on the hour mark. 
Um, quick, ask me questions um, before we sign off. I, we're, we're gonna, I'm gonna call it like 10, in 10 minutes, we'll, we'll wrap this up. So throw your questions in the comment box right now. And then hopefully in a minute, I will be able to see it because of the, the lag. <laughs> um, in the meantime, I have some questions that I have pulled from the comments of the videos in the last couple weeks. Um, oh, Moto Blonde. This was so much fun. Have a great night. Bye. Bye, Moto Blonde. Thank you for being here. You were lovely. I will never figure out why people worry or comment about what someone else takes with them. It's your stuff and you wanted to take it. That's all that matters. It's true. It's very true. Um, yes, that's all that I have to say about that. Do you come to Denmark? Uh, I have not been to Denmark, if that is the question. Um, uh, I have, don't have immediate plans to be in Denmark anytime soon. How many miles do you get per load you carry? What? That made no sense to me. If you're asking me how many miles I get per gallon with the load that I carry, I answered that a little bit earlier. I said it's 50, I have I got about 50 miles per gallon um, on the when I was on the trip. Hi from South Mississippi. Hi, welcome, Kathy. What's next trip? I answered that one earlier. I don't know. I'm um, going to Montana in February in the truck, not on the bike though. Um, next moto trip will probably be in April. Um, I might be doing like some cold weather camping, maybe. No promises. Uh, two wheels to survive. When are you doing a 1K in a day? Um, I will try again next year, but I think maybe my next try, I will like actually have the paperwork and that kind of stuff, and I'm gonna try to convince. Carrie to go with me. Um, if any of you watched the like the Babes Are Out episode from last year, um, on the way back I did 900 miles in a day, following Carrie from Babes Are Out North um, as she did her one can a day because she went all the way to Seattle. Um, so I was only 100 miles short, and following her made it a whole lot easier. So maybe, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> Make no promises. Zachary, do you think a waterproofing spray would have worked better than the frog togs? I actually sprayed the scorpion suit with waterproofing spray before I left, so the answer is no. <laughs> um, B. Bolly Bryant, ever rode to Grand Coulee Dam and watched their laser show on the dam? I have been to Grand Coulee. Uh, no, I have not been there to watch the laser show. What's your next adventure? I, like, I answered those ones, you guys. Kill Switch Queen, you can ride any bike, but it's the only bike for the rest of forever. <laughs> oh my god. Why do you guys answer, like, ask me, like, super hard questions? Um, this is so hard. Um, right now, I, 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 I love the Honda. It's a good bike. Um, I, I can't, I don't want to say the Africa Twin because I haven't gotten even test ride one yet, so I don't know if I'll actually like it. I like the idea of it. But I don't know if I'll actually like it. So I, I guess I guess Briarios. That's that's gonna be my answer. Robert, was your black helmet hotter than the white one? No. <laughs> Pay nerd, how much music did you bring with? Um, I don't normally download music to my phone. Um, for the trip, I did have I had a Amazon Music subscription and a YouTube Music subscription because I pay for um, YouTube Premium so that I don't have to watch ads. Um, so between those two, I, was most of my music, and then I download a lot of audio books. So at any one time on my phone, I had four audio books downloaded, and I I think I went through like six books while I was on the trip, something like that. Um, good night, Amanda. Bye, Critter! Thank you for being here! Yay! Gregorio, when I came on, you were mentioning equipment failures. I didn't catch what failures you experienced other than the frog togs. Um, just the, uh, the scorpion suit, um, in West Virginia, in the downpour, I got really wet. Not sure that I would really... Nah, yes, I will call that a gear failure, um, because my legs did get wet. I was uh, speculating that maybe like a lot of the water came in through my collar, um, but yeah, the scorpion suit epically failed in the rain. 
Um, but like it was great for the whole rest of the trip because it was super hot and the scorpion suit has a lot of vents. It's very well ventilated, so not an ultimate failure. Um, I I don't know like the fr if I would call the frog togs a failure either because like they aren't meant to last forever either. Like that it, when I purchased them, I knew it was going to be a temporary fix, like just to get me through the day so I could get to where I was going that night. Um, if I had thought that I was going to be in the rain for a long time, I would have gone to a dealership and bought some Nelson Rig rain gear. Um, Blue Ghost, I had a chance to meet two YouTubers last Saturday, one local, one from California. It was great. Awesome! I'm so glad that you had a great experience. That's super rad. Um, Dream bike, cost not an issue. Africa Twin, but again, I haven't got to test ride one either. I'm in love with the idea of the Africa Twin. That was the bike that I wanted when I got the CB500X because the CB was a better budget option. Um, what drone do you use? I have the DJI Mavic Air. Uh, the original one, not like the two or anything like that. Um, I still love it. Still a really good drone. Haven't crashed it yet. Knock on wood. <laughs> If we drop your name at REI, do we get a discount? No. <laughs> That's a definite no. Oh, Chris was here! Yay! You made it for the end! Hi! Scrambler Stories! If you guys do not watch Scrambler Stories, he's like traveling all over the country right now. He's got- he, his vlogs are coming out. Watch those. He's super rad. Him and Caitlin. Uh, Punishers California is here! Hi, guys! Just wanted to say hi. Applaud you for a costume. You are an outstanding role model. Oh, thank you guys. You are so rad. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, one that never breaks down. Yes, Jeff. I appreciate your answer. I, I'm, I'm going to steal that for the next one. Kate, thanks for inspiring this writer to do the thing. Yes! Spent my first solo week exploring Maine. Did what I could with what I had. No regrets. <sighs> that makes me so happy. Thank you. Speaking of like going out and do the thing for everybody who missed the beginning, I have shirts and stickers and all the good things. It says get out and do the thing. Um, and my Rebel shop, I also have uh, stickers now that I'll be putting in the Etsy shop here shortly. Um, but yeah, Rebel shop link will be in the description of this video. Also, while I'm doing that, I have calendars now. There, there are pre-orders for calendars on my Etsy shop. All the good things. What else? Let's see. Preview. There we go. Yeah! 2021 calendars with all of my motorcycle art in it. Um, you can go and pre-order these in my Etsy shop. Uh, pre-order ends December 30th. Um, the first batch of calendars is going to go out as soon as I get them. Um, and then I'll make another last order uh, once pre-orders close on the 30th. So most of the calendars will probably go out by the end of January. Um, as long as everything goes well. But yeah, if you want a calendar, cool, cool, cool. Uh, link to my Etsy shop is also in the description. Dork on the Road could hook you up with an AT. <laughs> Speaking of Dork on the Road, you should watch next week's video. I went down and rode with him. It was super awesome. The Honda handled the long story and gave the least drama. For real, though. <laughs> I was like, when I got back, I felt like it was so anticlimactic because, like, the pilgrimage compared to Fly the Magpie, like, there is no comparison because, like, the pilgrimage was literally just me dealing with Lazarus's shit and, like, the Honda was just like, okay, hey, you want to go there? Cool, let's go. <laughs> no, no offense to Lazarus. I love her. She's my baby, but, uh, it's, it's strange to go on a trip and not have to spend half of it dealing with mechanical issues. <laughs> What do I think of the Harley Pan America adventure bike? Uh, I have no opinion until I can see it in person. Um, I think it's healthy for Harley to try to branch out. Um, it's about time. Uh, but, you know, I haven't gotten to see it in person, haven't gotten to ride it, so I don't really have an opinion. Did you have any kind of throttle lock give the wrist a rest? Um, I did not have a throttle lock. Um, I had tried, I think, when I got to Texas or something, I picked up um, uh, one of those like wrist saver things that you put on and you just like rest your wrist on it. But um, I don't know how many of you have been here long enough to know, but I broke this bone in my wrist uh, two years ago now, 2018, I broke that bone. And uh, 
So the way that you push on the little wrist saver thing uh, irritates it. <laughs> so I would like move it over and kind of like try to put my arm on it for a little while. Um, but otherwise, no, I, yeah, <laughs> no throttle lock. Have you, ooh, my just jumped up. Have you watched Ewan and Charlie's latest adventure a long way up? I did. I I enjoyed it until the last episode. The last episode was a little bit disappointing, but um, yeah, it was cool. Uh, how about all the corn in the Midwest? <laughs> um, so when it came to Rocky Mountain Roll last year, his name was Ian and he was from the Midwest and I was telling him about my trip and he's like, oh, well, there's no point in going to the Midwest. It's just corn. It's just corn. And I was like, no, there's lots of people that I want to go meet. And I'm sure it's more than the corn. It's so much corn. There was so much corn. Did you find it hard to focus writing while listening to books on tapes? Um, at, no. If I found it hard to focus while writing, I wouldn't listen to audiobooks on tape. Actually, for me personally, everybody is different. Um, but listening to audiobooks, like, keeps my mind, like, on track. Um, I, it's, it, I don't know how many of you have experienced, like, road days where you're just, like, staring on it. You, hear, like, have, like, all the wind noise in your helmet. Even if you are wearing earplugs, like the wind noise, like is a like wind noise fatigue is like a real thing. Um, and so you're just going down a straight road. If there's not a whole lot to look at, there's not a whole lot going on. There are, isn't like a whole lot of like turns in the road. You just kind of get this road daze, and that is so much more dangerous than falling asleep at the wheel. Like because like, you can go like you know fifty some miles and then be like, oh what? How did I get here? Kind of feeling. Um, so listening to books on tape and like listening to music and that kind of stuff, that keeps my brain working and like attentive and like thinking. So road days doesn't happen to me when I'm listening to audiobooks. That's that's my answer. Uh, Zachary, you should do a best audiobooks for motorcycle riding video on or an Instagram post. I have um, a video that I did last year around this time of all my favorite motorcycle travel audio books, and most of those books are in audio form. If you go to my website, asthemifeflies.com, you go to the blog thing, you search audiobooks or like just books. Um, I did do a big blog post of all a bunch of my favorite motorcycle travel books um, that are all also on Audible, and I have direct links, all the good things. Check it out. <laughs> Sean, by the way, pur purchased my GoPro in anticipation of riding this spring. More purchases to follow. Oh, it's so exciting. Which GoPro did you get? Um, this best bike is the one that you have. Thank you, David. Thank you. <laughs> How is it going back to work after the trip? Um, uh, mm -hmm, not super awesome, but also I was really grateful to still have a job, you know? A lot of the trip, I was worried that I wasn't going to get back in time and that I was going to get fired. So there was definitely, like, relief coming back and still having a job to go back to. That was cool. Um, but, yeah, still still really stressful. Like, working retail this year has, has been, like, much, much more stressful. Um, when I first started working at REI last year, like, it really wasn't that bad. Like, everybody was really wonderful. Um, people who shop at REI generally are pretty nice people and are very considerate and patient um, and recognize like people who work there as people. Um, but once we reopened after the lockdown, like just like, cause everybody is super stressed out and um, they were, yeah, unpleasant. It was unpleasant, That that's all that I will say. Um, hold still for screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> if you want it, you gotta buy it. <laughs> uh, next year I'll make it way back up in the PNW duels. Yes! Chris, please, yes. Oh, look at all these lovely people. Alright, I should co-sponsor a Do The Thing line of gear with you so you can travel full-time. That would be rad. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Did you listen to Never Ending Story? <laughs> That's from my brother, by the way. Um, my brother and I uh, share an Amazon Prime account, and we discovered um, 
after he started using Audible that since we our, our Prime account is linked, um, our Audible account is linked. So when I buy books, he can download them on his Audible. And when he buys books, I can see them and download them on my Audible. And my brother uh, downloaded Never Ending Story and listened to it before the trip. And we were talking about it, actually, like, a bunch of, like, the smiling clips of me in the Badlands is, like, because we were talking about, uh, like, his thoughts of when he reread A NeverEnding Story. Um, no, I did not, I did not end up reading it. <laughs> Best audiobooks for the road, Mike. Uh, uh, check the, check the list. I made a whole video about it. I have a whole blog post about it. Um... Maybe off the top of my head, if you have not read Jupiter's Travels yet, um, that is uh, an audiobook and it's amazing. Uh, it's very introspective and it just mm, so good. Uh, also, Beard's book is also an audible book. Um, oh my god, was Lone Rider? Um, that is also an awesome book to read while you're also on the road. It's super cool. Rich Stace, have you ever tried Bunk a Biker from Facebook page? No, I have not. I don't like the idea of um, reaching out to strangers to stay with them. I just, it's not, it doesn't make me feel good. That's, that's it. It's just not for me. Everybody else who's used it has loved it. That is awesome. I'm not down for it. That's all. <laughs> uh, Olivia, favorite road trip snack. I'm a sucker for Snicker bars. <laughs> um, micro bars. I love them so much. Um, I think they're called micro bars. Macro bars, macro bars, um, the peanut butter flavor. I love it so much. Also Tonka bison bars, like bison and cranberries. So good. Um, epic bison bars. I love those so much. Um, I really like, um, bison jerky over like beef jerky when I'm on the road because it's a much leaner meat. There's a whole lot less fat. So it tends to upset my stomach a little bit less. Um, and I'm still getting a lot of protein. Um, I can't eat Cliff Bars anymore. Like, I ate a handful, like, when we did the Baja trip, and there's just so much sugar in it, it makes me sick while I'm traveling. Uh, yeah. Macro Bars are my favorite. If anybody has ever, like, checked out, like, my Amazon wish list, uh, Macro Bars are almost always on it because I never get sick of them. I love them so much. I, yeah. <laughs> I sing when I ride, but it may... It made Cena mad, and she stopped answering my commands. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, sorry, Zachary. Links are um, blocked. I can't fix that right now. But um, if you like, go to as my the as the magpie flies dot com. Go to the blog. Search like books. The post will come up, and um, for people watching after the fact, I always leave timestamps and links and all that kind of stuff in the description of the video so that, like, if you're watching it after the fact, you don't have to watch the whole hour-long thing to find the answer to one question that you wanted to know the answer to. Um, Chronicles of a Motorcycle Gypsy is awesome. Gypsy. G I can't speak. Chronicles of a Motorcycle Gypsy was super rad. Um, Tiffany is super cool. Also, an excellent example of somebody taking the bike that they had and doing the thing, even though people told her that it was not the bike for the job. Um, she's an awesome role model. Who are your favorite YouTubers? Oh god, that's that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, uh, people that I watch, like, immediately are not always, like, moto vloggers, and uh, uh, don't get angry at me. <laughs> um, Elsa Ray. Um, is a channel that I will watch immediately when she uploads something. Um, they, have, like, her and her boyfriend, uh, Baron, have been living out of a 13-foot scamp trailer for, like, frick, like, four years or something now. Um, so Elsa Ray, um, her channel is just so beautiful. And um, uh, when I was staying with her two wheels, she turned me on to another channel called Picnic Camp, which is beautiful and it's like ASMR camping. It's so good and very calming. And it's all Jess's fault because she told me about it when I was staying with her. Um, I really like On Her Bike, um, Nora. Um, if you try to search for it, it's like Nora like and adventurism, like in apostrophes. Um, they did a like uh, Sweden or something like that to um, the tip of Africa 
on Beastroms, her and her, uh, I think they're engaged now, not quite sure. Her and her partner um, did it on Beastroms, super cool. Um, also, Lee Rick, uh, Leah, Leah Rick, Lee Rick um, ha is actually posting YouTube con net comment content now. Um, and she is super rad. Um, she has a T, a T7 now. Um, but she used to, she did go around the world on a, a tiger, which is how I found her in the first place on Instagram. But she's now posting actual YouTube content, um, on the T7. And, uh, she's just like super rad and one of my heroes. So I'm, I was super stoked when she started posting content. Um, also like, obviously like her two wheels, Whip Mesa, Doodle on a Motorcycle, Kill Switch Queen, um, The Geared Raven, uh... Oh my god, there's just, like, there's too many. Jeez. <laughs> um, uh, I also watch a lot of Trent and Allie. They're building a house in um, Utah right now. But when I, when I initially started watching them, it was because they, like, they were van lifers and they were uh, on the Pan America Highway in their van on their way to South America, um, on the way to Panama, not Panama, oh my god, Patagonia. Um, and I think their van is stuck in Argentina now because that's where they were when lockdown happened and they flew back and have hence bought property in Utah and are building their house, um, waiting to be able to get their van back. Um, but they're just like lovely people and they're, they're an ex ex excellent example of people who know how to, uh, tell a story, even like doing mundane things like a daily vlog and that kind of stuff. They're just very good at crafting a story and keeping your attention um, obviously, like, I was already attached to them as humans before they started building their house, but, uh, that was a long tangent. Um, I'm sure that I could say more, and I'm sure there's ones that I have forgotten, like Scrambler Stories, um, Dork on the Road, oh my god, there's just, like, Living Off Slab, Two Wheel Rider, um, uh, Shade Tree Surgeon, um, oh my gosh, yeah, so, too many, too many. If you had to listen to just one 80s band while traveling, what would it be? Oh, that's so hard. Um, does Stevie Nicks count as an 80s band? <laughs> I love Stevie Nicks. Um, I like, I grew up on a lot of classic rock as a kid. We had like, my dad had like a big stack of vinyl records and every like Saturday we would just like blast them in the living room and dance to them. Um, so like I'm, I'm an ACDC child and uh, Blue Oyster Cult and uh, Rush and um, yeah. And uh, John Jett and the Black Hearts. Just one, that's uh, probably Stevie Nicks. I wrote my es my like my final essay for for college to Stevie Nicks, so my, maybe that's that's what I'll say. Uh, Fleetwood Mac, I should say. Who uh, I answered that one. I'm back had to pick up <laughs> left-handed chopsticks. <laughs> Did you hear from Tim Langley? I don't know. Got to go. Thank you, Petty Nerd. That. That's what Leah Rick's channel is called. It's got to go. Um, with a number two. Nora is awesome. Nora's super rad. Um, what is ASMR camping? Uh, it's like, there's no talking. And he go he comes in, he sets up the stuff, and, like, all of the audio is super high quality. So, like, all of those, like, small noises, like, um, like, setting up lamps and, like, putting the tent together. All those, like, small noise, like... That's kind of what I mean. It's just like, it's very calm. There's no talking. It's, yeah. Yeah. There's there's some um, music sometimes. Yes. Uh, Tim, FDA Adventures. Thank you, Pete. I see. I told you I'd forget people. Oh, my gosh. Um, do you follow Megan T Campton? Yes, I do. Uh, see, I told you I'd forget people. Like, there's, there's just too many. <laughs> I don't want to be in trouble because I forgot somebody. Are you ready for the dance off? I'm never, I'm never gonna be ready for the dance off. Killswitch Queen has like so much, so many better moves than I do. Oh my gosh, like <laughs> I just kind of flail, and like Olivia actually has the dance moves. 
Oh, bye, Zachary. Thank you for being here. Oh, Nathan's here. Hi, Nathan. If you guys do not watch For the Love of Knobs, you better. Like, you just stop right now. Go subscribe to the For, for the Love of Knobs. Um, he's also in the video next week. Uh, on your next trip, would you consider bringing a microwave oven? No. No, I would not. No. Is that supposed to be a joke because of all of the hotels that I stayed in? I don't appreciate that. <laughs> Okay, we've been going for almost an hour and a half, you guys. Um, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, I told you guys about the calendars. I do have um, keychains in the Etsy shop now. If you haven't gone and checked those out already, there we go. You can kind of see it. I, I can't do it. I'm not a beauty vlogger. Um, but I have keychains in the Etsy shop now with the little magpie. Um, uh, links to the Etsy shop and the Rebel shop because if you want one of these shirts or if you want a sticker or something like that um, definitely go check those out in the description below uh, yeah <laughs> I have uh, the collab with Dork in the Road and For the Love of Knob coming up next week make sure that you check that out make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button so you do not miss those things and Chris is here yay we're late, but we love you. I love you too. Thank you. For <laughs> I'm glad that you caught the end of it. Um, oh my gosh, what was I saying? I will also have um, lessons that I learned from 24 Days of the Road coming out here soon. Also, a like my favorite gear from 2020 with some of my favorite things that I picked up this year for the trip and after the trip. <sighs> yes. Thank you, as always, you guys, so much for being here. I appreciate you. Um, the people who watch live and also the people who watch after the fact. I see you. I see all you people who come in and watch it after the fact. You are amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> Love you guys. Uh, make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to watch next week's video right now, head on over to patreon.com backslash blind thistle. Uh, for as little as $1 a month, you get early access to new videos. Um, next week's video is up right now. Um, yeah, uh, links to the Etsy and the Rebel shop are in the description. And in the meantime, guys, I'll see you later. <laughs>